Well, welcome to our new Harry Farm video. And this one, I'm going to try and concentrate on what's actually happening on our farm, rather than like last one, I looked at DEFRA and this idea of environmental land management, whether it's the right direction. Thank you very much for all the comments on that. Seems I'm not alone in being very concerned that it's more for rewilding than actually food production is, seems to be the direction of DEFRA at the moment. DEFRA actually got in touch and they want me to come in and be taken through their plan. So that will be a future video and I have to thank them for getting in touch directly with me. But this one, I want to concentrate on what's happening in the farm. Um, I'm going to look at some hedging and some um, state fencing we're actually putting up. And we're putting some metal fencing up and some stone walling. First of all though, oilseed rape. We are in the block of oilseed rape on the farm for 22 harvest and what a difference a year makes. Um, I've got good plant population if you look down they're sort of reasonable plants as I want to see um, weed control has been pretty good the only thing I've got at the moment um, if you actually look is the pigeons are just starting to come in so they're nibbling off the new growth here we've been uh, sort of the pigeons haven't really been hitting it very hard this year but they've just come in so I've put some kites up over there they're not flying today because it's a still morning, but um, up until now, they've been doing a pretty good job actually. But I should imagine I'm gonna to have to have the, uh, the bangers go out here in a moment. But what I'm really keen on is the crop is generally healthy. Yeah, put no fertilizer on, this has just had herbicides and it's this cabbage stem flea beetle is the real worry. And I've just um, pulled a plant up and sort of cut it open. And at the moment, there is no signs of larvae damage. There's the growing tip there that's the root tap root going down absolutely clean can't see any evidence and that's that's really good news obviously the rate prices is well 600 pounds you could get if i had some in the um, barn now for harvest around 480 pounds a sort of discount for 22 there's a a bit greater area gone in the ground but this all looks okay at the moment. The next thing we'll do on here, this will be the first crop to get some fertilizer on it sometime mid end of February. I've got the first load of fertilizer coming in next week. So I wanted to bag it because of this crazy price explosion because it's linked to gas prices and we all know what they've done. So I've got fertilizer arriving tomorrow. So that's obviously rate this year. It seems to be a good news story, but next door is the barley and that's my problem crop this year. Let's go and have a look. Okay, well, this is the winter barley. And you might think, well, it looks pretty good in here. It sort of does, but there's a rather a big but because the barley, what I want to see when I look down a row like that is a clean row of barley and brown soil either side. And you will notice that it's not it's going a bit more linear there is more green in between the rows and that actually means there's weeds growing and a specific weed and it is really going to be really frustrating if you look here there's there's a tram line that should be absolutely clear but what's all this and this unfortunately is volunteer wheat this field last year was in wheat and we didn't get it all chitted before this barley went in. And that's really bad news. There's also, unfortunately in here, I've spotted some something called sterile brome, which is another sort of grass weed that you can control in wheat, okay, but in barley, it's a, you can't control it. So I've got a combination of weed wheat and sterile brome in my barley. Now this is um, this hybrid variety of barley with bazooka last, we grew it last year, and it's quite tall and it swamps weeds out just because it's so thick, locks out any weeds coming through because it's sort of dark under the canopy sort of, that's the theory. And I'm hoping that will do some, but this is so bad that I'm gonna have to go to plan B and C and we're talking about actually using a weeder, so an inter-row weeder, which is something organic farmers do to control weeds, and just see if we can hook out some of this wheat and stale brome. But at the moment, it's an utter mess. 
And the trouble is I can't grow a pure crop. So when we come to combine it, I'm going to have wheat in there. I'm going to probably have to use um, Roundup or something to try and um, senesce it all so I can actually harvest it. Otherwise, you've got unripe wheat amongst your ripe uh, barley. But this is sterile brome as well. And I think the problem we had is we baled the straw in here and I didn't have enough time from the bales being lifted off the field we quickly scratched this up, had a bit of rain, but only say 50% of the wheat that came out the back of the combine, the little chits that always grow. Um, we didn't get rid of it all with that stale seed bed. Um, you know, we did glyphosate before we actually drilled it. So we have a carryover of all this other stuff in the ground and it's all grown this year. It's been pretty good open autumn. And I've got this. So I've got too much grow in this field. But uh, we'll see what we can do. At least this is my problem crop this year, but it's not nearly as bad as the old seed rate last year. So it's, it's not bad and it's, it's only it's 40 odd acres out of 300 crops. So it's, it's a fairly small amount. Anyway, I'm going to show you the other farm. We've got some wheat growing there that looks much better. And we've been doing some other things, hedges and walls and things like that. So let's head over to that farm now. Yeah, I'm just bringing you down to have a look at the beehive, which is just down here. This is um, wheat here. You probably can't see with the sun, but it's looking all right. This is second wheat here, so wheat after wheat. If we swing round, this is what I, I love getting a hedger in um, because they just tidy the farm up. We had a whole explosion of brambles come out of here. They've all gone. The hedge, it's uh, exposed the stone wall again, and it's really good. And the, this is just where the beehive is which as you'd imagine bees don't do much during the winter but this is where they are i just want to show you what's happening with them because they're they're in there yeah, the bee lady in the village looks after them and they're in a cage as you can see that wire cage around them is because woodpeckers uh, can recognize a hive and they will tap away and see if they can get into it during the winter when they're, they're, everyone's short of a bit of food. She had a look at it, opened up the hive and put some food to get them through the winter. They're all hiding in there waiting for spring but apparently they look very healthy and um, like the rest of us we're all waiting for a bit of spring weather to come but yeah that's the beehive and why it's surrounded in wire. Let's just go up, back up and have a look at the hedge that has just been done and I'll explain why we do hedging at this time of year. We did this hedge last year as well and we've just given it a little angle at the top rather than having a flat top I've tried to just give it a bit more of a curve and you do it at this time of year because basically this you wouldn't do it in the autumn um, because it's full of berries etc and it's you know bird food in the hedge so you just keep that all the way through the winter to about now there's just some holly berries there actually just coming in um, and then you do this before they start nesting in the hedges so it was bare there was nothing else for the birds to eat really on this hedge but it just gives it a bit of shape and then we leave one or two like this for a tree that will then grow up and become a much mature tree as the years go by but yeah it's really nice to see this hedge and how it develops and it's a multi-species hedge that's why it's got the holly in hazel all sorts of things in there looks an absolute picture um, come summer spring uh, summer autumn time there's another tree we've left there but I just wanted to show you down here because what I'm finding this minimal cultivation people aren't recognizing it somehow as a cropped field so I'm just going to get out here Yeah, the wheat here actually looks pretty good. But what I'm finding is if you've got um, minimal cultivations, you have a lot of stubble on top. So it almost doesn't look as though you've got a crop in the ground. So people think, think oh, it's a stubble. But no, this is my crop. And that's what we're finding. Um, as people sort of turning around, trying to turn around the field, think it's just a normal stubble field. They've got stuck. Um, quite a few sort of trial tracks like that. So yeah, it's one of the downsides of minimal cultivation. The plus side is the wheat actually looks pretty good in here. I think um, we've had a fairly mild sort of winter so far. We haven't had the real frosts, but yeah, good tiller in out looking at this. My big concern is weeds and whether we've got some sort of grass weeds we'll need to knock on the head, but we had reasonable control from the herbicides by the look of it over the winter. 
So yeah, this is good for a second wheat. It's about as good as I could ask for. I'm just looking down here if I can see any weeds. Let's see, I'm looking between the rows to try and spot some weeds. And there seems to be very little. So yeah, good news. Right, there's some lots of other things going on in the farm. I want to show you now two big projects we're going to be doing over the next few months uh, with the stone walls and some special fencing. You might remember during lockdown, we put this stone wall up and it's still magnificent, I think, um, doing here. And it's an ambition of mine to do more stone walling. We've a whole load to do over in the distance, I'll show you in a moment. But we've also got an issue with fencing on this farm. Um, you swing around, you'll see here, this fencing isn't looking very healthy at all. And all the posts and rail in this particular field is on the way out. But I was very grateful to Toby at Wenham Young who is out in Suffolk and does um, what is termed estate fencing, the metal estate fencing. And he, I mentioned this about eight months ago that I had this issue with all the posts and rails that had just had enough and I needed to replace it. And I was thinking of doing this estate fencing. He, Toby very kindly got in touch, came out to have a look, really liked what he did. You can find him on Instagram. I'll put a link down below and yeah we're getting all this replaced with estate fencing and he does it in situ so we've ordered up the steel he'll be coming out i think he starts um sometime in february he'll be starting on this and i can't wait for it all to go at the moment as stanley's just discovered it's off but there is an electric fence here is what we've got we've got the alpacas out here we've had sheep in here as well but we really need to get on with it because that is firewood now that's not a fence but I've also got this stone wall going in as well. So we're just a little hop across the field and I'll go and show you that now. Right, it's a hidden corner of the farm here. But there was always been an old stone wall and it's just generally got overgrown and you can see the state of um, stone walls in. With all this hawthorn here is basically birds sitting on a stone wall, chewing away, having a poop and then you get hawthorn grown. It's self-set. It was never actually planted like this and it's highly invasive and it spreads out and then it sways in the wind and then it knocks down the stone wall. So what I'm trying to do here is to restore this stone wall along here and I did apply for a grant that will probably pay for a, a quarter to a third of the work but I, I was awarded the grant which is good news um, um, but I've got to do it this year um, to get this all repaired. So I'm preparing the site, so I'm going to clear it a bit more. You can see some of the wall is almost all right, but it'd just be terrific to see this um, put back in. But it's a fair bit of work to do um, here, but uh, I've got someone who's exceptional at it, and I want to make the most of that. And we have a stone wall down by the buildings hidden away that is just unneeded, hid not worth restoring so i'm going to bring the stone from there to help rebuild this so we can still do it with old stone so there you go lots going on on the farm as ever um, i'm also looking at um, a solar installation here as well on the farm buildings but there isn't time in this video to go through that but that is proving to be much more involving um, and complicated than i expected but i'll go into more details on that one on the next video. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, well, keep watching, keep subscribing, more videos coming along very soon. Thanks for watching.